Hi, uh, welcome to my presentation. This is Zahid Akhtar, and I'm, I'm going to talk about Pankwa adverbs. So, um, Pankwa is an auto name. Uh, most Pankwa speakers use this name for their language and for their ethnic identity. And in the literature, um, there are a number of uh, names that I noticed available uh, Pang, Pang, Pankwa, etc. And um, you can notice, like in most of the names, uh, there is a word pang. And uh, in some, uh, there is a word uh, like ko. So pang is actually uh, the name of a flower. And kua or ko or kua is the name of a place um, in pangkwa. So pangkwa is a, it's a compound, uh, meaning a flower place. As, uh, that Panko people now use uh, for their ethnic and linguistic identity. Uh, in the linguistic survey of India, uh, the name that I noticed that they used was Panku. Um, you can see a bar on A and U um, indicating length of the vowels. So uh, the number of uh, total speakers uh, are around 2000 at this moment. Uh, Pankwa speakers are mostly located in Rangamari district, Chittagong division, Bangladesh. Um, the highest concentration of the speakers is in the village uh, called Pankwapara. Uh, the number of speakers um, around 500. The language is largely undocumented and underdescribed. Uh, the language is considered as shifting um, according to ethnologue. So um, this is uh, the location of Pankwa speakers. Um, as you can see, this is uh, Chiragang division. Uh, here is Chiragang hill tracks. And Pankwa is, uh, speakers are uh, located uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, this is the Bay of Bengal. And this is the border with India. Uh, this is Northeast India. And this is Mizoram, somewhere here. Um, there are other Tibetan Roman languages uh, spoken around here. Um, so the neighbor, neighboring languages included uh, Chakma, Chittaganian, Bom, Riang, and Tanchangya. Um, most of all of these languages actually uh, are, are far bigger than uh, Pankwa. So Pankwa is the smallest uh, language in this region, um, if not in, in the whole country, Bangladesh. Uh, and here in this map, you can see the spread of um, Kukichin um, languages. Uh, so it's largely in uh, Northeast India um, on the border with Bangladesh, uh, somewhere in Myanmar. Um, and um, uh, on, the, on my title of this slide, you can see uh, Kukichin uh, is also considered uh, or named South Central, um, partly because uh, many Kukichin speakers uh, consider uh, the name Kukichin as uh, pejorative. So um, some uh, Tibetan Roman scholars, especially um, Scott D. Lancy, uh, came up with this uh, new term, South Central, for Kukichin subgroup. Now, uh, Pankwa is usually considered uh, belonging to the central um, uh, subbranch of Kukichin subgroup. Uh, there are other sub-branches uh, of Kukichin or South Central, for example, Northwestern, Northern, Southern, etc. Uh, since uh, Pankwa does not have enough data, uh, so Van Bick um, put it uh, in parentheses. Um, and uh, according to Peterson's um, subclassification of Kukichin, uh, Peterson actually did not put Pankwa anywhere. Uh, again, because um, Pankwa does not have um, data. But uh, from my own phonological analysis uh, of sound chains, uh, it seems that Pankwa would belong to Peterson's um, core central. Uh, now, uh, some notable characteristics of Pankwa, uh, particularly uh, those that are relevant to this presentation. Uh, Pankwa has an OV word order. Um, it has elaborate uh, argument indexation on the verb, uh, both pre-verbally and post-verbally. And uh, 
in Punkwa, verbs function as what is cross-linguistically known as adjectives. So in Punkwa, um, there is no like dedicated um, lexicon for the function of cross-linguistic adjectives. Um, verb roots um, are used for adjectival function in Pankwa. The sources uh, of data for this presentation came from fieldwork. Uh, I stayed in Pankwa for, uh, for uh, more than six months, uh, of course, in different times. And um, the, the genres that I collected included conversation, uh, oral narratives, procedural text, um, like how to do jum cultivation, jum means slash and burn cultivation, how to hunt, how to make houses, etc. Now here's an overview of Pankwe adverbs. You can see like I divided into two different categories uh, based on their formal uh, structure. So it's morphological and lexical. Uh, in this talk, I will mostly focus on uh, morphological Pankwe adverbs or adverbials. Um, now, um, the way a Pankwa adverbial is derived is in this way. So um, basically a noun root can be zero derived as a verb root. So zero, no sense. Um, and it, it can be a verb, uh, zero derived to be innocent. And then when it is postposed uh, with an adverbializer like kun, um, it becomes an adverbial phrase. And it occurs after another verb. So um, you can see uh, this um, contextualize in a sentence. So um, kan occurs after the verb zir and the whole uh, becomes an adverbial phrase. So zir kan is an adverbial phrase which uh, modifies the, the verb n. So an zir kan akal kalbing, uh, he looked innocently and left. Um, here is the source of my data um, that I uh, put here in the um, under, uh, underneath. Uh, now, some um, basic characteristics of the adverbial laser con is phonologically dependent, attaches to the prosodic unit of the verb phrase. It has come from uh, the word con, mean, uh, means how. And as you can see in an example, Kantisin bom kan tongsin, kantisin bom kan chongsin. How do you speak bom? So kan means how. Uh, it can occur on the content question particle um, e. So ikan lo nakalsin. So kan is again here um, is a full word is occurring on the content um, question particle e. Now. Um, the adverbial phrase can occur um, preverbally in, in an imperative construction. As you can see here, this example, Rankan um, Kalra, Melang Bangdingha. So um, the adverbial phrase um, occurs preverbally in an imperative construction. Uh, similarly, um, in a declarative construction, the adverbial phrase can occur preverbally. Uh, particularly when it is um, foregrounded for pragmatic functions. So, um, I killed many tigers. So since many is um, emphasized, it is foregrounded. So um, that verbal phrase uh, comes uh, in preverbal position. Now, uh, the adverbializing suffix kan uh, can be postposed with the locative case suffix in for emphasis. Uh, you can see an example here. Swakat kanin. And when this happens, kanin becomes phonologically independent. And it, uh, it is no more a, a suffix. It becomes um, a clitic or more specifically an clitic. Um, however, since uh, kanin uh, remains grammatically dependent on the host verb, uh, in this case, there arises a disconnect between uh, phonological word and grammatical word. So going back, um, kanin is a phonological word, as you can see with PW uh, here. And, uh, but 
uh, it is uh, within one grammatical word, swakat khanim. So here, one grammatical word uh, consists of two phonological words, two phonological words. So there is a disconnect uh, between uh, phonological word and uh, grammatical word. Um, here, uh, just I would like to note that um, when uh, this uh, post position with uh, the locative uh, and there is an em emphatic uh, adverbial phrase like kanin, kanin never occurs um, clause initial uh, position. Now, uh, going to the going to a different um, punkwa adverbial phrase dan, uh, as you can see, unlike kan, dan is phonologically independent, but grammatically dependent. So dan is a clitic. And it occurs um, alias postverbally. Uh, it has a semantic scope over the verb phrase. And um, so as you can see the the syntactic slot of done, it occurs after the verb, but uh, unlike kun, it does not turn the whole verb into an adverbial phrase. Uh, dan itself is an adverbial phrase and it occurs after a verb. Um, in the corpus, I, frequent, I found that it frequently occurred after the existential verb am. Um. Um, so, nan am dan hi. Uh, literally, you all exist like this, but um, metaphorically, uh, it means like yeah, in your current um, or present circumstances. Well, um, unlike kan, uh, dan cannot be postposed with uh, the uh, case suffix in. So you cannot say like am dan in, uh, thang dan in, etc. Now, uh, let's talk about um, the quantity adverb ver. Now, you notice that uh, I transcribed with, with an extra uh, high tone ver, um, which I didn't um, transcribe for any other words. Uh, I didn't transcribe tone here, but I had to uh, transcribe tone for uh, ver because it was so um, apparent, uh, so evident, and uh, it seemed to interact um, closely with pragmatic uh, functions. Um, another reason I, I didn't transcribe tone because uh, Pankwa speakers uh, were never consistent in giving um, tones um, uh, to me. Uh, so, um, but for like ver, um, there was no doubt that it had extra high tone. And so I think that it will it will not be a mistake if I um, transcribe tone for uh, ver in Pankwa. Now, ver is alias uh, phonologically um, independent, but grammatically dependent. And uh, it has a semantic scope over the uh, verb phrase. Uh, similarly, um, the intensifying adverb, chia, uh, with um, a glottal stop and again, uh, extra high tone, uh, allies occurred um, after the verb. Um, it's, it's phonologically independent, but grammatically dependent. Yeah, as an intensifier in Pankara. Now, uh, let me talk about uh, Pankara lexical um, adverbs. The first one is uh, the manner lexical adverb, yang, uh, means in this way. Um, it occurred uh, allies clause initially um, and um, Unlike like ver, unlike ver, um, and con, uh, yang has a, a semantic scope over the entire class. Uh, another um, panko lexical um, adverb, tua, um, temporal, occurs class initially and has a semantic scope over the entire class. Now, uh, like con can be postposed with um, the um, case suffix in for emphasis and in can be reduplicated for you know emphasis and you can see like tua in 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 a spoken pankwa um, it is uttered as tua in uh, there's another uh, highly frequent pankwa uh, adverb frequency adverb null Again, um, it receives extra high tone all the time, uh, occurs um, after the verb, post-verbal position. And here you can see hung phone nalti. Uh, so null has an extra high tone. 
Now, interestingly, um, I noticed like in Panko's, um, as I uh, pointed out, Panko has elaborate argument indexation on the verb. And sometimes I notice like null, this being an argument index like for pragmatic uh, functions. So null late or null late uh, uh, So uh, ob object plural form is index on null apparently for uh, pragmatic emphatic functions. Uh, Pankwa, of course, uses some uh, reduplicatives. Um, I uh, did not um, list all uh, reduplicatives here uh, that function as adverbs. Just uh, for example, I included only a couple. So the first one is sets up, uh, means happens uh, This is a partial reduplication uh, with bowel chains. And uh, apparently there is uh, some sort of iconic um, you know, connection uh, with the form and the function, like um, partial vowel chains and haphazard. You know, uh, if you compare it with another reduplicative church, uh, this is a complete reduplication, uh, no vowel chains, and it's a continuation of the same kind of work. Uh, however, uh, as you notice uh, in church, um, the uh, first root is uh, has a low tone followed by a high tone. So the tonal uh, characteristics is like, you know, asymmetrical. Uh, maybe it is again, uh, iconically, you know, um, pointing to the fact that the high tone at the end finds that there's a continuation, like uh, the continuation of the work. So tantur to au tantur rua, tantur kept calling. So um, by way of uh, giving a summary, uh, so there's the whole list of Pankwa uh, adverbs that I talked about. And um, as you can see, uh, the morphological uh, adverbializer can phonologically dependent um, occur on the verb. And it can assume a clitic status uh, when uh, postposed with the locative em emphasis. Uh, then, unlike Khan, is always phonologically independent, but grammatically dependent, and uh, it occurs uh, on the verb, having a semantic scope over the VP. Ver and Chia, uh, both are phonologically independent, um, but grammatically dependent, uh, have a semantic scope over the VP, um, has extra height. Um, Yang, um, Tua, and Nol. So yang is um, a lexical adverb, uh, allows class initial semantic scope over the entire class. Uh, same for tua. Uh, null, however, uh, is a less uh, postverbal and has a less extra height. And reduplicatives um, usually functions as verbal modifiers and can code various semantic categories like manner, um, aspect, etc. Uh, here's the abbreviation of the glossing that I used in this presentation. Uh, there, there is more to it. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, any questions?